Are you ready for a good old-fashioned farm workday video? Yeah? Well, I am too. The first thing we gotta do this morning is move the layer hens. Once a week, Hillary and I move the laying hens to fresh pasture, and the whole setup is mobile. The wagon can be pulled to a new spot, the fence moves easily. Why do we do this? Well, we do this because it improves the quality of the eggs and it keeps the birds from tearing up the pasture. We want the hens to be able to forage for grass and bugs because it improves the quality of the eggs greatly. That's what makes a true pastured egg. Some commonly asked questions about our laying hen setup. One, how do all the hens get up into the house at night? Do you have to bring them all in? No, there's 300 of them out here and they know all by themselves at sunset to go in and roost in the egg mobile and we just close the door in the evening. We teach them to go up in the egg mobile by leaving them in the egg mobile for at least 24 hours after we move them out to pasture in the spring. That way they learn that the egg mobile is where they lay their egg and it's a safe place to roost at night. Second question, I get this type of question a lot. I saw on some other channel or at some other farm, the farmer doing it this way. Why don't you do it that way? In the specific cases, why don't you run your laying hens behind the cattle to break up the cow patties and eat the fly larvae and help with your fly issues? Well, the reason is because our operation just isn't balanced that way. We'd either need a lot more laying hens or a lot fewer head of cattle. Our cattle run on a paddock that is 80 feet by 300 feet every day and we move them to a fresh paddock every day. Putting up 80 by 300 feet of electronet every day would be a massive job and we don't have enough layers to cover that area. <laughs> This job takes Hillary and I about 20 minutes or a half hour once a week. It's not really a very big job once you have it set up right. The next job is not a farm job per se. Well. They're all farm jobs when you live on a farm. My wife's van took a crap last week. The radiator started leaking into the transmission cooler and the two fluids intermix. So I'm at the tail end of putting a new radiator in this. I just got to flush out the transmission. I'll just disconnect the hose that comes from the transmission into the radiator cooler and flush fluid out through it into this handy dandy milk jug. That strawberry milkshake stuff is water contaminated transmission fluid. Got to get it all out. Yeah, needs another round. Take two quarts out, put two quarts in, keep going till it's clean. I like working on old tractors. I don't like working on old vehicles so much. I guess it's a necessary evil. We live in the Rust Belt where they put salt on the roads in the winter and it seems like most of the work I have to do is from the rusty side of the vehicle underneath and it's no fun. She's good. Hey, did you hear about the elephant with diarrhea? No? Well, it was all over town. 
Hey, you whiners and belly acres. We got a steer and a heifer going to the butcher this weekend, so we're gonna bring them into the barn. Oh, man. We gotta get two of those guys in here. And luckily, our cattle are naturally curious. We'll open up the pen. All right, go check it out, guys. What do you see, Hell? Who's that? Who's this? That's all six. So we want him. Yeah. That was easy. They walked themselves then. <laughs> oh man. Hair in her ear. That's 1902. Okay. And six. So now we have to sort through these guys and get all the rest of them out except for the two that we want. All right, you go out. Come on, red one. No, not her. That's two. Come on, out you go. Come on, out. That one goes. Can you work him in around? Nope. Get back. No, you gotta stay. Sure you stay. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. No, no. All right, guys. Come on, go. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We'd be like, we did all this and we didn't get any food. Ugh. What kind of place is this? What a jet. Look what I found. A salamander. We don't see them around here very often, except in creek banks. <laughs> He's nervous. Pretty cool. All right, buddy, we'll put you back down. I boarded up the gate because with cattle, out of sight, out of mind is kind of a rule. As long as they can't see the other cows, they won't test that gate. I've gone over this before, but a little cow psychology for you. Um, they'll always come in and investigate this pen when we open the gate because cows are curious. And we put them in here three or four days before we're gonna load them to the butcher to get them comfortable with being in this little pen so that on loading day, they're not already stressed out by just being in the pen and they're more likely to be calm when we walk them onto the trailer. Through November, our butchering schedule is two Dexters a month and then after November, as we get into winter, we have two or three brood cows that are older cows that are going to the butcher as well. And that seems to match well with what we're selling for beef. We're pretty much sold out from last month's animals. What's next? Well, we gotta take a batch of broiler chicks out to the pasture, but first we gotta move their boxes. We gotta take these two boxes here and turn them around and face them the other way because we're gonna turn the rest around and come back down the field. Actually, you know, I think I can tow these by hand. Just as with eggs, chicken tastes a lot better when it's raised on pasture. I think it's a combination of things. It's having access to lots of sunlight, lots of fresh air versus being in a barn. They get to catch and eat bugs and they get moved to new grass every day. They love to eat the legumes, clover and alfalfa. 
plus we butcher in a very non-stressful way, at least until the bird's final moment. We collect them up in the morning and within an hour or two, they're in the cooler. So I think all these things combine to make a chicken that is unlike anything I'd ever tasted before we started raising it. Broiler chickens were the first product we ever brought to market and they're still by far our most popular product. We run out of chicken almost as fast as we produce it. And compared to pork and beef, there's a lot more profit in chicken and a lot quicker turnaround time on your money. You get a chicken, eight weeks later, you've got chicken at market. Parting board, is that what this is called? Parting board? People ask me all the time to do a chicken butchering video, but I won't for a bunch of reasons. Number one, there's lots of chicken how-to butchering videos out there on YouTube to look at already. Number two, I moved away from doing graphic videos like that. I did a bunch last year and just the comments I get are just not worth it. Number three, there's a lot of liability in it for us. We butcher our chickens under the USDA small farm exemption. I have to carry a separate insurance policy to cover the meat that we've butchered ourselves that we bring to market. And if in that video I were to show any little thing wrong with the way we butcher or our facilities, I could lose my privilege to do the butchering on farm and that would be terrible for us. And that's it for that job. And this pasture is getting too tall for the chickens. I'm going to take second cutting hay just as soon as I get a weather window. Well, we're back to deal with these jokers again. Right, jokers? Come on, cows. <laughs> Come on, cows. Patty's in the lead, just like she should be. She's our boss, cow. Come on, cows. <laughs> Oh, why do a couple of our cows have horns? Well, because we bought them that way. We dehorn all of our calves, but a few we bought were horned when we started out. Come on, guys. It's time to move the cattle to their new daily paddock. We finished this five acre field and now they're on this five acre field, our lowest field. We're grazing them along this. We're not using a back fence because they're gonna be off of this in a week or so. This is some awful nice high protein forage that they're on. I really couldn't ask for anything better. My favorite part of the day. Hey, beautiful calf. This is our oldest cow, Carrie, and she has a giant udder. Her calves never go hungry. And you steers are always curious. Oh yeah, and water, that's what people always ask about. Where's your water in the paddock? They don't need water in the paddock. When a cow is on grass like this, they will drink hardly any water, but they do have access to water always. They come back through and up the laneway to the grove 
where there's water. At the furthest point, it's probably an 800 yard walk, less than five minutes for the cows. It's no problem. Hey guys, where'd you put your dishes? One's way back in the corner there, one's over there. You guys didn't think I'd forget the pigs, did you? They're doing well, growing, having fun in their jungle, but they've been clearing this out. Now you, you remember what it was like, right? I mean, I couldn't walk in here like this. They're going through and tearing down everything. Look, here's a horseshoe from one of my ancestors. There's all kinds of stuff scattered around in here because we had an old bank barn that stood right here. In my dad's days, they burned it and then they pushed it into a hole. So all the hardware that was in there, old horseshoes, horse tack, old farming machinery. There was a fanning mill I know is kind of buried in here and it gets dug up once in a while. Contrary to the story I told in the last video about the guy with the metal detector, I can't dig a hole around here without digging up horseshoes, spark plugs, bits of chain, nails, china, bottles, you name it. Hey guys, if you're not interested in me, there's food. What a bunch of pigs you are. I got some interesting stuff coming up on the channel. Next week if we get to it, and hopefully we will, we're going to sort the herd and put the bulls in for breeding season. That's always a fun event. And as soon as the weather breaks, I'm going to be doing second cutting the hay, and I'll be sure to make a bunch of videos on that. Brownies piglets are ready to come out, so I'm going to put them in the hut here and board them in till they get comfortable, and then we'll let them loose, and we'll see how the two batches get along. So stay tuned. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.